All right, so yesterday, the Mets made a pretty confusing move because they've been saying, we're going to sell, we're going to sell, we're going to sell. But then they were buyers acquiring Marcus Stroman for Anthony Kay and Simeon Woods Richardson, who I think were fifth and sixth or sixth and seventh in their, their prospect, their farm system. So for me, I, I, just, I don't understand it, but we're not here to talk about it was a good move or a bad move. What we're going to be doing today is a Marcus Stroman rebuild with him on the Mets. So... If you guys want to see more rebuilds around trade rumors or trades that happen in the majors, make sure you hit the like button down below and let me know which you know rumor or trade you want to see a rebuild around. Subscribe if you're new and enjoy the content. And if you guys use SeatGeek to purchase any tickets for game events or anything like that, and you guys want $20 off, use the code Antortiz. It's a pretty good deal there. So no more intro. Let's get into it. So you guys always ask me which roster I use. If you search, you have to search this. It'll be this right here on screen right here it'll it'll pop up there's a 2.0 version i use that obviously i've tweaked it a little bit to kind of reflect a little bit more of most recent updates couple roster moves couple transactions and things like that it's not a perfect roster but that's the one that i thought was most up to date um best with like potential and stuff right like that so it's it's not perfect there are some things are a little questionable but it's not terrible so with that Let's, let's look at this. We got Marcus Stroman in the lineup. I think we need to trade Noah Syndergaard. He's been heavily, you know, rumored to be traded. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to trade him. And then when we look at the, the lineup, it's it's a little questionable. It is a little little questionable. We, we do got to move some players around and stuff like that. Um, so let me do that real quick. Let me get the lineups and pitching rotation all sorted because that is not what I want to rock with. Um, I think I think when I moved Marcus Stroman manually, it kind of did change around some players from the minors to the majors. So that's why some things are a little a little shuffled up and not where they should be. So let me get this lineup all sorted and I'll see you guys in a sec after we also make a couple of trades. All right, so Noah Syndergaard has been a player that's been really talked about. Just been talked about heavily and being traded away. We're going to trade him to the Indians. I know we could have gotten Trevor Bauer. I know we could have gotten Corey Kluber, but I'm more interested in a younger uh, player who's going to develop in Shane Bieber, especially when you look at his contract. He's got team control for quite a while, so it's perfectly fine making that move. We're also to kind of make this trade happen because I wanted to get rid of Todd Frazier as well. We're going to be adding Danny Salazar and Deanna Navarro. I didn't really want Deonor Navarro. I guess we could bring back Kevin Pulawecki. Um, actually, we can't. So Deonor Navarro, G Gregory Guerrero too. So there's the first trade. It's mostly just because Syndergaard's been rumored to be traded away. I wanted someone in return. That's the move we're going to do. Our next trade we're making is Rich Hill and Ross Stripling. I mo mostly just want Ross Stripling as that long reliever for Yoenis Cespedes, Irving Santana, and Danny Espinosa. Basically... I also wanted to get rid of Irving, or not Irving's antenna, Yoenna Cespedes' contract, so there's that. All right, this trade is just straight up Zach Wheeler for Jaime Berea. It's it's a seven overall difference, but Berea usually develops pretty quickly. Zach Wheeler sits around a four or five ERA normally in a franchise, and Zach Wheeler's been, you know, one of those players, again, being linked to being traded away, so let's do it. Jed Lowry, Newton, and Adrian Hernandez are going to be traded for Jorge Soler. Um, we need a left fielder. And we're going to go with Soler. He's not necessarily the best of fielders, but I think we'll be okay with just his bat. All right, so season one, I know we have Dom Smith, who's not up in the majors. I definitely want to find a way to get him in to the major league squad because he does develop quite nicely. But this is what we're going to be rocking with. Jeff McNeil is going to be switching between third and second. Then J.D. Davis will take third when McNeil's not there. We got Rosario, Nimmo, Alonzo, Conforto, Cano, Soler, Ramos, and then J.D. Davis on the bench. We got Deandre Navarro, Lagares, and Echeverria. When we look at our pitching rotation, there are some players I did want to keep, like Jaime Maria. I wanted him up. That was really about it. Um, the rest, you know, Danny Salazar, we'll see how he does. This season's kind of a, let's see how certain players do, and then we'll we'll trade them uh, like accordingly. If they do well, we'll get rid of them, or we just won't resign them. If they do, if they do wait no. If they do well, we'll keep them, and we'll you know we'll keep them, kind of build our squad around them. If they do poorly. We'll let them go. We won't resign them. You know, we'll trade them. Whatever, whatever needs to be done. So this is what we're working with. You know, I like I like this three right here. These two not so much. That's why I really wanted Jaime Berea there. Um, I might just do it anyways and maybe send down Rich Hill because I know Rich Hill is going to decrease pretty quickly, and there's no point in keeping him on the major league roster if he's gonna if he's just gonna do poorly. And then we move up Jaime Berea. 
and he should be fine. So we'll, we'll rock with that for now and then just see how things go. Alrighty, draft day. We have the 11th pick. Um, let's get into it. Let's see what we work with here. So there's a lot of good for uh, starting pitchers in this year's draft. You got Luis Benitez. So, I mean, look at those stats. He's a 65 overall. The hits per nine are a little low. You look at Alan Mays. Home runs per nine is a little low. Controls a little low. But that, that velocity, that break... Those per nines are really nice. The stamina is a little low too, but he could also be moved to the bullpen. Um, definitely be a solid option. I mean, Johnny Valley's solid as well. I mean, the hits per nine, a little little suspect as well, but still very good per nine stats. Um, John Nicholas, Elvis is not as good. We got Kevin Law, who's pretty solid. I mean, I don't think we could go wrong with any of these pitchers that we pick. I'm leaning towards johnny valley compared to like luis benitez just because johnny valley's stats are just a little bit actually are they mm. oh this one's tough this one's this one's a tough one we're gonna go luis oh we're gonna go mm, i i know they're not gonna be there the next time we pick uh we're gonna go we're gonna go johnny valley i uh, i think we should have gone luis benitez but we're gonna go johnny valley Okay, so another pick that I was looking at, Alan Mays. He's available, so we're going to pick him up. I'm looking at it. I don't want to go full um, pitchers. So we're going to go Pedro Salas. I looked at Adrian Mesa. If he's still there later in the draft, we'll take him. But we're going to go Pedro Salas. His fielding stats are really high, and the hitting is only going to improve. So I feel like he's a decent little pickup in the third round. All right, it's the fourth round. I'll take, I'll take a chance with Adrian Mesa. We got two more picks. I think we're just I think we're gonna be stuck with pitchers as like the best available we are Jamal Lentz I don't think I think he's gonna be like B potential low 80s potential as well but we'll see we you know he might he might be a little late late round gem I think Ross Overton is actually a pretty good pickup it's just he's gonna be like 50 overall and he's not really gonna be worth much so we'll see what we can find here doesn't look like much uh, I think we're kind of stuck with whatever is available. Um, I don't know, really. We'll we'll take Armando de Jesus. I know he's gonna be bad, but we'll we'll see. You know, we could always get lucky. Let's take a look at our draft, see how things went. I do want to see how Luis Benitez was. Um, so we're gonna find him right away first, because he was a first round pick for somebody. Um, Chad O'Connor was someone we looked at. Okay, so he was he was a decent little pick. But I want to find Luis Benitez first. Where is... Of course, he's probably going to be on like the other side when I went one way. Where is he? There he is. He went to the Phillies. 93 potential, 67 overall. So, pretty solid. Definitely a pretty solid pitcher. Um, so, let's, let's see what we had. 94, 71 overall. So, I think we did make the right choice. Johnny Valley. You know, our next one. 86 potential, 70 overall with Alan Mays. I think that's a great... A great draft as well or a great draft pick um the rest not so good but to be honest i kind of like our first two picks two starting pitchers who could potentially hop into that fourth or fifth spot um in a couple seasons so i kind of like that at the deadline i saw that wilmer font was still on our roster he's part of the blue jays now and then he was with the rays so i don't know why he was with us um robinson cano unfortunately it sucks he's actually having a really solid season 265 isn't terrible um like a month ago he's hitting 300 so he, he dipped a little bit since last i checked but we're gonna trade wilmer font really um i wanted just aaron bummer but because of cano's horrible contract we have to throw in kelvin herrera and also Ivan Nova. We're not going to use Nova. We possibly will use Kelvin Herrera as well because we are lacking a little bit in that bullpen department. So that might have actually been kind of a blessing in disguise. All right, we're getting a new reliever. Juris Familia is garbage. Uh, he's having a very bad season. He's had an eight ERA. We're going to go for Andrew Chafin, um, which means we're going to trade Justin Wilson because we have a plethora of lefties now. All right, we're going for Mets legend, Hansel Robles. Um, I know he's not. I know he's pretty bad. We're going to get traded to uh, Justin Wilson, Drew Smith, and Luis Avilan. Um, Hansel Robles is actually having a really solid season, so I'm going to give him a shot again here with the Mets. And you guys can see we have quite a few bullpen arms, so we need to, we need to trim this down a little bit. All right, so after all those moves, the starting rotation stays the same. 
this the bullpen was the big switch up that happened a lot of, a lot of different pieces moved and then our lineup really is the same besides Cano so we brought up Dom Smith that's really about the only changes so season one a lot of moves were made I hope they pan out for us let's see how it finishes so season one it, it finished a lot better than it started because let me tell you we were like 11 games under 500 at the deadline so things really turned itself around we did finish 81 and 81 obviously not good enough for the postseason we missed out by seven games and in the wild card seven games so unfortunate no league leaders no awards let's take a look see how things went we sat down jason vargas which is a little disappointing because at one point he was like I, I, let me see he was seven and seven but at one point he was six and one so it sucks that he just dropped off in rating so quickly um when i sent him down at the deadline he was like a 68 because he was actually having a phenomenal season Jacob DeGrom did very well. Low ERA, low whip, good strikeout numbers. Marcus Stroman, the ERA is a little high, but the whip's a little high as well. But maybe that'll change as things go. His potential has actually gone down as well. Shane Bieber, okay. I can get behind those numbers. Those are good. Jaime Berea, the ERA is a little high. He is up to a 76, though. So that's, what, a four overall increase. And then we brought up Steven Matz, and he actually had a really good year. Am I going to bring him back? maybe we'll see if we can't find another uh starting pitcher to to build around there ross stripling looks like a great addition if we can get him back next year i think that'll be a good move it says he's going down i'm assuming a lot of morale is coming into play because we did so poorly but when you look at our bullpen it looks like the moves we did make really paid off edwin diaz is a player i'm gonna keep my eye on because he normally does poorly um and then danny salazar i'm not too sure on i might let him walk when we look at our lineup, I mean, I think it's it's a solid lineup. Uh, Conforto's up to an 81. Brandon Nimmo's not a true center fielder. I'm thinking of trading Jorge Soler next year, moving Nimmo to left, and then we can just find ourselves a center fielder. We got Pete Alonso here. Dominic Smith struggled in his limited at-bats this season. Ahmed Rosario's up to an 80. Soler, the thing is, Soler hits the ball so well, it kind of sucks to tra have to trade him away, but I think that's just probably the best move for us. Let nimmo develop in left field and then we just get a new a new center fielder so when we look at our our prospects we do have desmond Lindsay, who's a c potential player but he's almost a 70 so potentially he could get involved we have andres jimenez 69 overall nice luis guillermo is 64 so we do we have a couple players but overall our farm system's pretty poor so i'm not really sure what to do with that i don't really want to invest heavily into it but for now Let's see who wins the World Series. Let's see if we can find a new center fielder. I think that'll help with the lineup a lot. And then we definitely got to figure out that pitching. Because I feel like for some reason our pitching wasn't terrible, but it just wasn't good enough. So let's see if we can make some moves, make some changes, and make this team a little bit better. All right, we're not going to sign any of these guys back. Um, we're going to move forward with everything. They didn't really contribute much to the team. Arbitration-wise, um... I'm going to let him walk. I'm going to let Danny Salazar walk. There's no point in keeping him. Seth Lugo, I don't even think pitch, he pitched for us, but did poorly. So, yeah. I've, I basically mentioned who I didn't want to keep. The rest I'll keep. And then we definitely got to give everybody here a contract. Maybe not Caminero, but we'll, we'll probably give the rest contracts. Alrighty, so start of season two. We made one addition in free agency, I believe. The rest were... We're, we're gonna make some trades that's basically what i'm trying to say I'm, i was trying to think of who we we signed and like whatnot so i traded for this guy because i forgot to move uh simeon richardson or richards uh from the stroman trade so i just i just traded for a catcher that was really low rated um we brought in eric sogard and then we oh we actually made three additions eric sogard steve ciszek and brian goodwin the rest were like very like low rated contracts uh, lo low rated minor league contracts i don't really know what i'm trying to say here basically i they had good potential i brought them in um and you guys can see there were quite a few that had some pretty good uh potential were sitting in free agency so that's what i was doing because i didn't really want to pay a lot of 500,000 600,000 contracts for players we weren't going to use which the mets they have a lot of players who 
like request those kind of contracts so we're gonna go with the low rated ones i have a trade in mind because i do want to make a center field uh move so i'll be right back with that one all right we're gonna trade for ramon loriano of the athletics you guys can see his stats are really nice uh he had a really good year last year he's already played two games because of the the japanese series that's still part of the schedule uh, we're gonna trade for ronnie mauricio who if i was doing a long-term mets rebuild i definitely would would keep him um jorge soler who had a really good year for us but it's his contract here he's probably gonna cost us around six seven million next year and i would rather move nimmo from center to left so that's kind of what i'm thinking you guys can see I, I, he fits that left field mold a little bit better and then we have brian goodwin who's a really solid backup um, so I kind of like this move. I think it, it fits us a little bit more. Um, the other piece was someone that we signed in free agency, Eric Pena. He's 53 overall. We're not we're not going to use him. So that's the move for season two. So now when you look at the squad, it looks a little bit better, you know, with the addition of Steve Ciszek. I mean, our bullpen was really solid last year. I feel like this is a, a pretty strong area of our squad as well, the starting rotation. You know, we do have Alan Mays and Johnny Valley who could potentially feature next year if they really get you know they really develop quickly and one of these guys just kind of sucks that's basically how i got to put it um lineup wise i mean it looks good dom smith is improving jd davis could probably hit that 80 mark this year maybe 82 83 he had a decent year last year so he's kind of he's kind of a, t a fuel out see how he does if he does poorly we definitely will try to find a new third baseman if he does well we'll keep him but overall i feel like the squad is really solid um we just got to see what what changes we can make depending on performances. Ahmed Rosario is another player I'm kind of worried about. Prospects wise, I don't really see anybody breaking the squad this year. I mean, Jimenez maybe. That's really about it. Maybe Dilson Herrera, but he's not really a prospect. He's 26. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't really see anybody making the squad. So, that's the squad for season two to start. Deadline day may be a little little bit of action. I think we're going to be buyers. Like, we'll actually be buyers. We're not going to say we're going to be buyers and then be sellers. We're going to be buyers. Let's see what we can do for season two. All right, so season two at the deadline, we're sitting pretty pretty solid. I just want to strengthen up the bullpen a little bit. Uh, Jusselman, Gesellman, I always am told how to pronounce his name. I always forget it. He's probably one of the weakest links in our bullpen, which sucks because he had a really solid year last year. So... I kind of want to hold on to him and see if he'll come like get back on track but when we're trying to make the postseason i feel like we can't really afford to do that ross stripling is also having a rough year so he it's between these two and i kind of feel like maybe we actually do ross stripling and we're gonna go for sam tui valala and jd hammer jd hammer mostly for the memes of the glasses but he's actually got decent stats so he potentially could be a a piece we use next year Tui Valala is a player I'm interested in he normally is on my like do not trade for list but um we're, we're, we'll add him and then we'll just we'll just throw in Corey Taylor and then we'll just see how it works out we'll, we'll bring in Tui Valala Stripling will probably get moved was obviously not in that long relief role anymore so let me get that rotation set up and I'll show you guys so yeah this is what this is what we're working with not much has changed just the long relief spot uh robert's gonna move up to that one and then we'll have tui valala in the uh middle of the rotation lineups looking good i i like all the changes that have been made it's like it everyone's doing really solid really our only weak link right now is ahmed rosario he's hitting 214 so i usually end up trading him i really wanted to give him a chance to develop and see if he would do well and it, it may end up being that we end up trading him anyways so we'll see season two is doing okay you guys can kind of tell jaime Berea's era is a little high but he's eight and four on the year so i feel like things are going well let's see how the rest of the season plays out all right season two the second half of the season went a little poorly which worried me because i was like at first half we were doing so well everything was going our way but we are a postseason team so that's good 93 and 69 nice we're taking on the dodgers in the division series so let's see how we finished we finished three games above the braves who made the wild card um, with the padres and the rockies missed out by a half game that's crazy so league leaders wise degrom had the most strikeouts um ooh, it's on the nationals i saw tatis jr got traded twice once to the blue jays for Bo bichette and then the next time he was traded somewhere else and i forgot where it was it was just insane to see that we have a gold glove and a cy young but um as you guys can see here let's take a look at the lineup so brian goodwin is a phenomenal bench bat like if you ever need one pick him up he is so good thomas nadeau 
or Tomas Nidos, not not good. And then Eric Sogard, the nerd. I was kind of hoping he would be decent for us, but 213, not the best. So 281 for Jeff McNeil on base percentage is at 344, slugging three or 434. Pretty solid, pretty solid. Nimmo, 286. And in left field, I definitely think that fits his uh, his like attributes a little bit more. You know, not the best of fielders, not the best of arm, decent speed, but I think that fits a little bit better. Michael Conforto, kind of the same thing. I think he's more of a left fielder compared to a right fielder, but I'm more interested in his bat. 37 home runs, 107 RBIs, perfect. Pete Alonso, 46 home runs, 105 RBIs, almost a 300 average. That's great. Ramon Laureano, 265. Potential is going down. Probably just because he had a down year compared to his previous seasons. His contract's a little bit iffy too. But overall, I like what I'm seeing. Dominic Smith's up to, a, to what? 80 with a 262 average. So he definitely bounced back from his previous season. Ahmed Rosario. Ooh, he went up, what, 30 points since the uh, All-Star break slash trade deadline. So that's good to see. JD Davis is still doing well. So we're probably keeping him around. Wilson Ramos, I'm not too sure about. His contract's up. I don't think I'm going to bring him back. I think I'm going to try to find a different catcher. Plus, for $10 million, I feel like we could definitely use that elsewhere. So, looking at our rotation, DeGrom was a Cy Young winner for a reason. I mean, the whip is low. Good strikeout numbers. Low earned runs. It's it's just nutty what, what, what we saw here. Marcus Stroman, great bounce back here. Low ERA. Low whip. Good strikeout numbers. He's not really known as a strikeout pitcher. He's more of a ground ball pitcher. So, Good numbers. Shane Bieber, mm, yikes. How do you go up a full, like, one ERA? Yikes. Um, yikes. Steven Matz, probably not coming back this season. Uh, we'll try to replace him. And Jaime Berea had a good second half of the year, which is good because I've, I've, I want him to hit that spot, that four spot. We can find somebody for this fifth spot. Might even be Johnny Valley, to be honest. I mean, look at those stats. I mean, even Alan Mays is having a good, a good, uh, minor league career so far so we have two potential fifth starters next season uh robert he doesn't really fit in this spot so that's probably an area we're going to look to acquire maybe a long reliever chafin struggled so we definitely won't be bringing him back i know his contract's up at the end of the year robles whoo he's doing really well two e's doing solid kelvin herrera great i think his contract's up this year too so again a player will have to pay c check we have one more year he was amazing um amazing just aaron bummer you're supposed to be our lefty and you're, you're struggling this year and then edwin diaz will we'll keep him for the third year he's been solid for us so we have c check diaz aaron bummer will probably be moved into this middle relief spot we'll try to find a lefty that can be our setup guy and then i mean actually we might not we might just look for a long reliever let chafing go move robert into the middle relief and just find that long reliever like i said lineup wise i'm happy with it Maybe, maybe a couple bench bats, but overall, I'm pretty happy with the way things went there. Um, we might not even need a bench bat the more I think about it now, because we have, who do we have? Who do we have? Who do we have? We had a prospect, um, Andres Jimenez, who I think will most likely feature. We could also maybe get Will Toffee involved, even though his hitting stats aren't that great. Um, I mean, if we really wanted to, maybe Dilson Herrera instead of Eric Sogard, but overall i'm pretty happy with what the way the team's looking so calendar wise the dodgers solid solid first two games we're gonna let shane bieber take over for game three city field we'll see we'll see so they have no changes besides jorge alfaro two run home run for cody ballinger great way to start the game awesome all right so first and second or second and third. Whoops. Second and third, one out. Do I take the sack fly, get at least one run back, or do we let him swing? Double play. Amazing. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to see right there. Just, oh, perfect. I love it. So let's keep going. Besides those two runs, though, it's been it's a, it's been a good outing for Bieber. Ryu's on the mound for them. We can't take advantage of it. So I thought the sack fly was the right move. You know, I thought it was. Really, we couldn't we couldn't do anything with that leadoff double, and then Max Muncy makes it a four run game. <sighs> double play, two double plays for Pete Alonso this game. All right, Shane Bieber really probably should have taken him out last inning, but all right, JD Davis. Okay, solo shot gets us within three. 
We'll take him out. We'll go to Goodwin. And then let's see if we can get him on. We can't. All right, we get two back. Ooh, okay. Maybe this is the inning. Wilson Ramos strikes out. And we're heading to the ninth. We'll bring in Bummer. Gets the out. And then we'll we'll just play the matchups. We, we have to at this point. So they bring in Ken Lee. And unfortunately, that's where our season ends. All right. It sucks. We did have a little bit of a late comeback, though. I like that. But um, it just... It looks... It looks... uh. It looks a little sad when we score. We didn't. We just didn't score enough. I feel like the pitching was solid. I mean, two runs here, four is not bad. Five's a little rough. Um, and it, Andrew Chafin let us down there. So the Yankees lost to the Cubs in the World Series. So unfortunately, that's just how the things play out. I think this is a good year for us. I feel like this is definitely a season where we can make some moves. We'll be set. So exclusive negotiations. Ooh, Stroman. He had a really good year. Let's do. Let's do let's do something like that. This is what I was worried about. This is why I don't want to bring back Wilson Ramos either, because I knew we were gonna to have to pay a few a few arms, and that's <laughs> that's what I was worried about. Um, the rest though can walk. These two I knew we were gonna to have to pay for, so that's kind of why I was like, eh, let's not let's not offer anybody anything. And Steve Ciszek declines his option. Oh no. Uh. All right. So we'll figure this out. Arbitration wise, Steven Matz is probably the only one that I'm not interested in doing just because he just struggled. The rest I will give. Um, Brian Goodwin was an amazing bench bat for us. And then the rest are going to get contracts for sure. All right, season three, it's our make or break season. Can we make it past that first round of the postseason? I think I think we can. Our team's pretty strong. We're going to be trading for Tyler Duffy of the Twins. 62 stamina is really solid for that uh, long relief spot. I did say we needed one. We're going to be trading Brady Corner. Um... David Peterson, and then where is he? Jose Mesa, who we signed last year in free agency. So that kind of does help us out because now we have that man in the long relief. This is where I'm unsure. I don't know if JD Hammer is really the solution to our middle relief problem. C Shack didn't want to come to the team for anything less than like 8 million. I just couldn't make that happen. Um, I'd rather, I was kind of. In my head, I already knew I was going to have to make trades. I was already going to try to acquire some newer players. So I just wasn't sure if that was a move that we could afford to do. Now that I'm looking at it, I might trade JD Hammer, maybe Alan Mays as well. Try to get a really good starting pitcher and then maybe move Johnny Valley here. But I mean, when you look at Johnny Valley stats, he's 76 overall. I expect him to be really solid this year. It's just, I don't think JD Hammer is a player I want there. When we look at the lineup... The only change we did make was we brought in Marcus Semien, who's only one rating higher than Ahmed Rosario. It's just his hitting stats are a little bit better too. Um, it, actually, when you look at them, they're pretty similar. Um, it's just he's hitting a lot better, more home runs, more RBIs. So that's kind of the thing I was looking at. Um, we'll, we'll swap between them, see how things work. But I, I wanted a better hitting shortstop that would bring in more runs, more RBIs, more, more home runs. Because when you look at Ahmed Rosario, it's just just it just wasn't good enough uh so we'll see we'll see for sure or we could use marcus Semyon as a a bench bat which is also a possibility as well so we'll see i'm gonna try to find one more trade if not we'll hop into this year as is all right we're going to amir garrett from the reds a good lefty we're gonna be trading alan mays i didn't really want to do it but it was a move that needed to be done we're also trading jd hammer who again i wasn't sure if i really wanted him in the bullpen um so let's let's make some moves. Amir Garrett's gonna be the setup man now. He does want to be a closer. It's just I can't I can't make that happen. Um, Edwin Diaz has been very consistent for us, and I can't I can't take him out of that spot. If he starts doing poorly, then we may you know maybe move Garrett to that closer spot. But looking at it now, you know my my biggest concern is gonna be Johnny Valley. But when you look at the squad overall, I'm pretty happy with it. James McCann's our new catcher. I have a feeling he's going to hit just as well as Wilson Ramos. Wilson Ramos wasn't doing too much. But I kind of like the squad. I feel like we're set. Um, we should be fine. I think we got better. Losing Steve Ciszek is going to be a huge problem for us. I feel like... I think that's going to be our biggest concern. Losing Steve Ciszek. That's really about it. Um, ooh, do we let Kelvin Herrera be the setup man or Robles? They've both been very good. 
Um, we'll start like this. I'm pessimistic and optimistic at the same time. I feel like this is our best team yet. But at the same time, I feel like there's just something's missing. So we'll see how it goes. At the deadline, we're definitely going to have to probably make a move. Definitely probably. We'll probably have to make a move. So let's get into it. See how things go. So I was looking at our team and I kind of want a different third baseman. And Marcus Semien and JD Davis are pieces that I'd be cool with moving. I want to add a little bit more pop. Miguel Andujar is definitely an option I'm looking at. You know, has the pop. And so does Eugenio Suarez. So both I can get with this trade. So that's why I'm kind of like, ooh. And I know I've said Ahmed Rosario is not really the option. But I looked at these two stats a little bit more closely. The difference was like 10 RBIs. So I feel like if we add a little bit more pop to the lineup, I feel like that person that we add to the squad can make up for those 10 RBIs that we're missing from Ahmed Rosario starting compared to Marcus Semien. So Andujar, Suarez... Oh, they're, they're almost this. You know what? We're going to go Andujar. Uh, so JD Davis, Marcus Semien, and a guy who we signed in free agency, Alexander Palma for Andujar. We're going to stick with that. Um, now I think we will have a spot for a, an extra bat though. So I think that actually works in our favor. We should have a spot for another bat because we did trade an extra player away. So let's bring up Toffee, Dilson Herrera. It's either Herrera or Jimenez. We'll, we'll just do Herrera. Um, we'll do that. And then that should be the lineup. I mean, we'll add Andujar, obviously. Who, who just rakes. He's just crazy, crazy, crazy bat uh, with the power. And that should that should really do it. I feel like that's that was a move we did, we did need to make. I feel like that's the right move. Get a little bit more pop. So, yeah, that's the team. Let's do it. Let's just hop into it. I feel I feel pretty good about it. I don't want a Med Rosario that high up in the lineup though. That's that's just asking for asking for trouble. So there's the squad. Pitching rotation hasn't changed. It's still the same. But now we can hop into this season and see how things go. Alrighty, let's see how things go. I mean, heading into the playoffs, I feel like we should win. With the way the team performed, 103 wins, 59 losses, we should win. Looking at league leaders, Michael Conforto had a year. And then uh, DeGrom, obviously. DeGrom's just, it's just too good for a Sim style franchise. MVP, uh, we had a rookie of the year. Okay, Hank Aaron, and he had to have won the Cy Young. Yeah, MVP and Cy Young. So, I know this was a Marcus Stroman rebuild. And let me tell you, look at those stats. He got continuous, he got better each year. Last year, he had a good year. And I mean, really the only thing that kept him back from winning the Cy Young was, to be honest... A like what 100 strikeouts and you, you, that sounds unreal marcus stroman's not known for striking out pitchers this is a a, a surreal season unreal 263 108 whip i mean that's just uh, just solid that's just great degrom i mean that's uh, pff, unreal shane bieber solid back to what we were expecting of him 98 record though not crazy jaime Berea never really panned out which sucks because i've seen him in like other rebuilds with the cpu he gets up to like 85 in like three seasons so i was hoping we got that berea not the not the washed up one uh johnny valley had a 415 era 136 whip but i mean that's that's not terrible not terrible only gonna get better too which is crazy to think about tyler duffy struggled a little bit in this long relief role but we don't really have anybody else we could rely on it looks like sam tui valala struggled a little bit four five era so we're down an arm in the bullpen but when you look at the bullpen ooh yikes edwin diaz we might have to go to amir garrett as our closer or maybe even kelvin herrera overall though only one two arms in the bullpen like middle relief and setup that had an above three era i love that jeff mcneil a little bit of a down year a little bit of a down year which sucks high strikeouts to 105 interesting uh branding nimmo same thing kind of a quiet year for him home runs rbis are down miguel andujar Gave us some pop, 22 home runs, 79 RBIs. Uh, obviously, being in the three spot compared to like the four or the five, probably hurt him. But it's looking like RBIs went down a little bit for everybody. 
Michael Conforto, though. Whew. Whew. On base, slugging OPS of 1043. I like that. Ahmed Rosario. Okay, he's getting better. He's getting better. It takes a little bit of time to warm up, but hey, he's getting to that rating. Dominic Smith's being a little pansy because he's not starting. That's his big issue. That's what's hurting him. Otherwise, he definitely would have had a really solid season. The thing is, unless we moved Nimmo back to center, but when you look at Ramon Laureano, look at those stats. That's not a player you want to trade away. So Dominic Smith just unfortunately doesn't fit in the squad. James McCann was a solid replacement for Wilson Ramos. And when you look at everybody else, I mean, our bench, pretty solid. Overall, pretty happy with it. The team looks good. I like this. So let's head into this postseason. Let's see how things go. Taking on our divisional opponent, the Braves. So two and one. Oh, really? I feel like we just I just get so unlucky in a sim style franchise. It's just so so unlucky for us. So looking at their lineup, Castellanos is a great addition. Tatis Jr. What? Oh, man. Okay, so that's a good start. A double. Can we bring him in, though? We can't. Mm. A single. First and second. No outs. Double play. That is... That's rough. Bases are loaded for McNeil, and he can't bring it in. So that's two straight innings where we had runners in scoring position and couldn't take advantage of it. I have a feeling that's really going to come back to hurt us. So let's see what we can do. Hit by pitch. That's the second time he's walked. And Jeff McNeil comes up clutch with a two-run bomb. All right, so we have that two-run lead. DeGrom's pitching well. Um, he's been hit twice. I think the Braves are trying to send a message. I think they're just trying to take us out. Brandon Nimmo makes it a three-run game. And I like that. DeGrom's pitching well, like I've said. One run scores. Another run scores. He's done. Uh, eighth inning. We're going to go to Herrera and... Uh... It happens every single time. It happens every single time. James McCann brings us within two. Like, what, what am I supposed to do there? A two-run bomb, four-run inning. And that that's the season. That's the season. It sucks. I haven't made it to a World Series in so long. Actually, I haven't won a World Series. I've made it to a World Series. It's just I haven't won a World Series in so long. And unless I, like reload the save and start from the postseason again which i feel like it takes it away and i'm more and i i look at it more of i'm not gonna win a lot of world series if you sim a franchise you're not gonna win a lot of world series you it's, the odds are just stacked against you there's too many games there's too many variables it's really tough so if you're looking for someone who's gonna consistently win a world series that's not me i'm here to show you player growth player potential build a squad who you can trade for stuff like that and when you look at this squad yes the farm season the farm system's a little bit depleted but overall you're looking at a strong squad Mc, mcneil that had he had a down year nimmo had a down year and only going to get better alonzo's going to hit 99 and you know it conforto's going to give you another two three seasons before he you know tanks in rating ahmed rosario is only getting better dominic smith i mean realistically you somehow got to find a way to get him into the squad but i don't know where after you acquire ramon loriano who looks like an absolute beast pitching wise i mean jacob de struggled a little bit in the postseason but overall i've been johnny valley is gonna look like a stud in the future i wouldn't have traded what was it adam wells if we weren't just doing three seasons i definitely would have kept him because he would have slotted in that four spot maybe that three spot in a couple seasons and I think the team's just really good. I feel like, you know, you got DeGrom locked up. You got Stroman, Loriano, James McCann, Ziffy. And yeah, some money's... I mean, actually, no money's really spent. You really could bring a lot of these guys back and still have a solid season for the next three, four seasons. And that's what that's really what I do in franchise. I'm looking to build a squad. And I may not win, but I'm building a really solid squad. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's rebuild, the Marcus Stroman rebuild. And he missed out on a Cy Young just because Jacob DeGrom is a strikeout master. That's really what it was. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, like button down below. Subscribe if you're new and enjoyed the content. And in the comment section, let me know if you want to see a trade rumors rebuild or anything like that. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.